Everybody smile for a second. <laughs> So when uh, President Obama called and asked me to give this speech, I was honored. And to think, today is the day that so many of my teachers said would never come. Well, I sure showed you, Dr. Schaff. As we move into our first year of real doctor, and I say real doctor because up until now we've been playing doctor on everyone, it's important to remember a few things, like why we went to medical school in the first place. Many of us had heroes we looked up to. My hero wasn't just an amazing doctor, he was an amazing person. In fact, even today, I still look to him for help with things such as relationships, moral judgment. In fact, there was really nothing that my hero, Dookie Hauser, MD, could not handle. <laughs> Many of us are headed to exciting places next year, places of academic renown, places of tradition and experience, much like USC, places no one has ever heard of. And some of us are headed to specialties like dermatology, psychiatry, or pediatric cardiothoracic neurosurgery. And three of us, I'm not gonna say which three, are going into the adult film industry. <laughs> it's not a joke, it's actually a statistic. <laughs> Looking back, it seems like just yesterday we were given our white coats by Dr. Taylor here. How exciting that was to get this shiny white acceptance into the medical club. What we didn't know was what they were getting of what they were giving us was a giant symbol that we were the lowest animal on the hospital food chain. <laughs> I literally had people change their attitude towards me when I put my short white coat on. And as we start our new jobs as interns next month, guess what they're giving us? Another white coat! <laughs> Don't be fooled that it's longer. We're still paid bad. And why is it white, you ask? So it can hide our tears and sweat stains. Many of us came here with lofty goals to change the field of medicine, curing diseases, and basically helping to save mankind. But we quickly learned that medical school is hard. Sometimes it swallows your life. Your spare time and your plans get put on hold. And uh, the once ad enthusiastic attitude changes to, sure, I'll still save, still save the world, just after I finish taking this neuro test. A wiser person and classmate of mine, Cambria Garrell, once said, in medical school, we get so tied up with everything, but life goes on. <laughs> Cambria's from Hawaii, that's how she talks. <laughs> yes, life goes on, and sadly, for, most, for many of us, life sometimes meant losing something while we were in medical school, like a pet a spouse, a family member, or in the case of James Lee, a classmate and a friend. There's things about medical school like stress, fatigue, and exhaustion that truly have to be experienced to understand. Sometimes, when I was so tired, I'd walk in and see my patient sleeping so peacefully. And I'd walk up to their bed and say, Excuse me, have you had a bowel movement today? <laughs> if I'm awake, they should be awake. <laughs> But when you're on call and your alcoholic patient with liver failure sneaks out of the hospital to hit up the nearest bar and then returns four hours later in an ambulance to be readmitted, you feel a sort of fatigue. And it's a different kind of fatigue. I call it compassion fatigue. I think we can all relate to a time where our compassion fatigue has set in, usually with a patient that just doesn't seem to care what happens to them. And it just wears us out when, they, when our hard work seems useless. Well, I looked up compassion fatigue on Wikipedia. And I uh, found out it's not only unoriginal, but it's listed as a secondary traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> I only bring this up because I think compassion fatigue can be blamed for a lot of mistakes that are made in medicine. And it's something we'll really have to face in the coming years during residency. Uh, we have to remember to be compassionate. Even if, even if our patients don't care, we still must. Being a doctor is going to be pretty weird for most of you. I don't know about everyone else, but as for myself, thanks to Google and Wikipedia, I've been giving out medical advice to my friends like a doctor for years now. <laughs> Not because I wanted to, but because people are, people are sometimes awkward, and when there's nothing else to talk about, they can always bring up that rash they have, or however, since they went to that UCLA party, it burns when they pee. <laughs> Well, thanks to the advice of my lawyer, I started adding, you should still seek professional advice, since I'm not qualified yet, to the end of everything I say. Well, guess what, people? Today, I am the professional advice. So don't bother asking for a second opinion. <laughs> Now is a good time to talk about being humble. <laughs> Thanks to Hollywood, the media, literature, 
Medicine has been glorified into this romanticized and respected career of miracle workers and moral lighthouses. I mean, let's face it, we're like walking encyclopedias with ethical standards and 2,000-year-old oaths. We have art exhibits and TV shows and House MD and Grey's Anatomy and, of course, jokes. Did you ever hear that one? What did they call the guy who graduates last in medical school? Doctor? <laughs> well, I talked to the curriculum department. And once and for all, we will end this lame joke and know the name of the person graduating last in our class. And his name is... Scott. Never mind. But humility is important because things won't always be the way you dreamed it. You'll have to remember that what you're doing is ultimately helping people. But then again, you earned it too. So be glad that after four years and $400,000, you can always impress your friends by explaining the difference between a cephalohematoma and a caput succedaneum. But don't feel the need to explain this all the time. They'll think you're pretentious. <laughs> I feel so fortunate to have spent the last four years with the friends that are sitting here. We went through a lot together. Lectures, labs, Old County Hospital, and just in time for us to leave the New County Hospital. We learned a lot from Old County Hospital though, like how to hold your breath for 18 floors on an elevator. <laughs> Turns out, the most important test you can pass in medical school is a TB test. <laughs> but everything rough about Old County was okay because they served ice cream every Friday. <laughs> but uh, has everyone realized that we're the last medical school class to spend four years in that building? Just a thought. LA County was one of the main reasons I came to USC. And after four years, I realized how naive I was. <laughs> LA County was so much more of an experience that I could have ever hoped for. And some of the stories we could tell you are nothing short of haunting. And, but I think my classmates would agree that we owe a lot to that building and the people in it. As it turns out, some of the biggest educators we had in medical school weren't the ones with medical degrees. They were our patients, a, diver a diverse group of the most grateful people to ever have a medical student poke, prod, and practice on them that we'll ever know. So on behalf of my fellow classmates, I want to thank the patients we were fortunate enough to encounter over the past four years. Now if I could just have that last part translated into about 20 languages and posted around the hospital, that'd be great. A lot of us are probably sad to be leaving USC. I know I am. But take it from me as a previous graduate of USC. I can tell you that you never really leave. The alumni fundraising committee will be on your ass forever. <laughs> I spoke before about how medical school is hard at times, but not just on us. It was hard on those around us, and I think this moment also belongs to the people who stuck up, and stuck around and put up with us. So I want to take this opportunity to thank our wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, and significant others. Our education at USC did not begin four years ago, but decades ago, with the friends, family, and mentors who have led us along the way. These people laid the foundation that made everything here possible, and I think it's important that we recognize our friends and family for all that they've done, too. Thanks, Having spoken to you over the last few minutes, I have found a newfound respect for our faculty and deans who have lectured countless hours over the past several years. Considering how long it took me to write this speech, the amount of work and preparation that goes into our education is unimaginable. To our faculty and deans, we are eternally grateful that you could be our mentors, our friends, and the lessons you have taught us will continually reveal themselves throughout our professional career. Your thoughtfulness, character, and knowledge has touched all our lives, and we cannot thank you enough. I also have to thank everyone who ever worked in administration, curriculum, student health, MDLs, labs, and every other equally, department, equally important department that helped us over the last four years. These are the unsung heroes, the people like Janine White, Ruben the IT guy, and of course, Pete Carroll. <laughs> These people went out of their way daily for us and deserve our thanks. Lastly, I want to thank my fellow classmates. You guys are the coolest group of friends I've ever known. Truly the reason medical school was so fun. And for those that don't know, this is an amazing group of people here. 
They do so much for the community, for their patients, and for each other. They've proven themselves as worthy of today's ceremony, and I feel honored to have shared a part of my life with them. We became so close over the f past four years that we now understand what it means to be part of the Trojan family. I think we're all destined for greatness, and I hope we stay in touch. This may be our last day together as a class, but I know we will all meet again someday. Fight on Trojans.